Well, I've been lucky enough over the years to play at Warwickshire with one of the world's best fielders. Come on, Trev, show us how it's done. Is the difference of a good fielder and a, and a great fielder? I think the difference is that the great fielder is more athletic. Um, he seems to have a lower center of gravity and he seems to read the ball a little bit better than the rest. Absolutely brilliant. The great fielder practices more than the good fielder. I know I've seen a lot of cricketers in my time that have had the talent to be great fielders, but they don't practice, so they just stay as a good fielder because they're happy with just being good. What a great catch, Trevor Penny. Watch the reaction to Trevor Penny. As good as anyone in the world in that position. It's a crucial position, backward point. That's why when this man doesn't get a lot of runs, no one complains too much. Look at that catch. He's almost at gully when that shot was played. He's that close, and it was hit very hard by Peter Bowler. What a catch. That one belongs to Trevor Penny. To start off with, the walking in, I believe now, we only need a four or five yard walk in. I've set some goals up here. I've got my uh, underarm thrower about five or six yards back. I'm gonna have one, two, three, four and set. Okay, now I want your players to actually get on the balls of their feet. Your feet are slightly wider than shoulder width. Now my center of gravity is nice and low. You'll see later when we do the dives, this is the position we wanna get into. You have to have a nice low center of gravity so you can dive or you can push off. Brilliant. Michael Clark. He's been brilliant all season. I've watched fielders walk in a bit like the Pink Panther. They walk in as though they sort of don't want to hurt the ground and then they jump back. They're nervous of the ball. So you want to give them a nice rhythm and in practice with a nice underarm throw, dead easy to get your your players getting into a nice rhythm. You've got to watch your players. They've got to set as the ball is about to be hit. Or as the ball's been let go from the, the bowler, then he sets and he's ready. If you do it too late or too early, you lose your rhythm. If you get in a good position early, batting becomes easier. As soon as you make that mistake, you LBW or you nick it, you haven't got as much time. Fielding's identical. You need that walking in and positioning and timing of it all to come right and then it becomes easy. If you've got all your ring fielders, even if the ball goes off somewhere else to mid off or mid on, if he's gone bang, oh, didn't come to me. That's the sign, that's what you wanna see. You wanna see your guys wanting the ball, not just sitting on their heels. So with these simple catches, good to get the technique of just that click step. Okay, from there, if it does beat me and it's still, you know, it's far away, then I can dive again. But as soon as I, do that, I can't do anything. I can just fall over maybe. Okay, we'll just do one where I cross over, so you can see. Much more difficult, felt horrible, I didn't feel in control, awful catch. Okay, we'll do another one. Same, much easier. Kept a level head, my hands are in the way, I've still got power to dive if I have to. I've got my goals, he's not going to throw it in the goals, that's my aim. But I'm going to do it with control, and I'm going to set nice and early, bang, and I'm going to push off. Okay, with Westy I'm going to do just a few dummies, just to check where his feet are, see how he's doing with his rhythm, see where his head is, and then we'll have a bit of a game with him, see how he does. That's good. You notice... It's a very simple practice, but I'm throwing quite hard underarm. I can't get it in those goals, which are five meters apart. So it's a great practice. It looks very simple, but he's actually grooving and he's training his body to move in these ways. I've got a, an underarm thrower. He's going to throw me a cut. And generally, I'll try and hit my player 20 to 30 catches in there nonstop. I'll let him catch it, come out through the goals, protect his goals, and then go back and walk in, take it slowly, it's not just 30 on the trot. Okay, that's great. So that, that's worked really well. And for specific fielders, you can do that square leg, mid wicket, mid off, mid on, or cover. You, you do the practice according to who you want to uh, play in that position. Okay, from here, I haven't got him diving yet. So we're gonna go outside now, and we're gonna do some technique work with diving and getting him 
feeling comfortable with landing on his chest and having full length dives. Most people in cricket don't like diving because their technique is wrong. They start from a tall base and then they have to dive over their, their legs. So they're actually hurting their tummy, hurting their knees and they're hurting their arms. Since I've sort of stopped playing and, and sort of done some fielding coaching, I've analyzed why people are making mistakes and it's all technical. What we're gonna do is start from a nice low base and our head is key here. Head has to go at the ball. If our head goes up, the body can't go down, therefore it's an incorrect dive, you're gonna hurt yourself. Paul Collingwood, now he's, to me, he's a bit like a John T. Rhodes fielder. You know, he's a stationary um, set position and he's brilliant at diving. I'm just gonna to feed to Westy's left, let him get used to the dive because he needs to warm up a bit and then we're gonna go into a bit of a competition. That's fantastic. If you notice, his head is level and actually going down. He catches it, he throws his arms out and he doesn't just catch and stop on the floor. He actually goes about a meter past where he catches it. So that means his momentum is fantastic. Strong in the legs. Catch it! Well catch. Jamie Dalrymple at backward point has taken a quite magnificent catch. That's great. It's just important doing these practices to let him have 10, 20 on one side and then on the other side to get the feeling of landing on his chest and it's human nature to worry about hurting yourself here and most people get these elbows in the way so concentrate on throwing the elbows out brilliant wow that is unbelievable for Rhodes okay now we'll just have a bit of a competition first to five I'm going to see if I can get it past Westy lovely catch it's a great catch very good two to you lovely Great catch. The reason why we're doing underarms as well, I can throw exactly where I want. Good. Okay, we're gonna move on now. We're gonna move on to a, a different type of dive. It's a dive of when the ball's hit on the ground, not in the air. And you know that you can't pick it up cleanly. You just can get to it and you're gonna save four runs. Okay, this dive is different in that you, you don't have to go with two hands. You can go with one hand and extend as far as you can. You're still gonna get your head going at the ball. So it's a real fast one. If you had extra cover, bang, it's hit hard. You can't go with two. And you're just gonna save the four. You might go for one, but it doesn't matter. You've saved the four. John T was obviously fantastic. He, for me, was a, a diving fielder. He also got in on the one, but his main attribute was you couldn't get past him. Okay, we're gonna move on to the the third and final dive which I want to do, the John T. Rhodes dive. It's a ball that's coming relatively fast and it's bouncing, but you know you can get it. It's not a, a really difficult stop like the one we've just done. So it's a bouncing ball, you're going to be in your nice low position, you've spotted it, you've tracked the ball, you're going to dive, bang, up. Oh my goodness me. That's it. That's fantastic. Diving to the left, it's not as easy because you can't just get up and hit the stump. So there's two ways of doing it. If it's beaten me for pace and I can't get out there and I've taken it late, then I would swivel because it's easier. If I see it early and I've taken it out here, then I can just swivel and throw that way. So I'll just turn. So it depends how fast the ball is and where you've taken it. And as per usual, I like to, to finish off with a little game either side. Obviously, I'd have done the left side as well. And then you move into a first to five or something like that. I only know from my own personal experience from when I was younger, I thought, well, it's half the game. If I am bored and I don't enjoy fielding, I'm not going to enjoy my cricket. So I used to enjoy my fielding as much, if not more than my batting sometimes. So I'd always try and get into the best positions, try and create the run out, try and have a game with the batsman, um, and, and just have fun and try and get wickets. Now you can set up two stumps. I'm gonna pretend that's a stump, and that's a stump. Okay, if he does a clean stop and he hits the stump, he gets two points. Okay, if I get it through, I get a point. So he's, if you dive that side, you've got to hit this stump. Dive that side, hit that stump. Yes. 
Very good. Hit the stump. Two points, Westy. That's fantastic. Excellent. Okay, we're going to go on to some um, hitting the stump drills now. Uh, we're going to start off with the one-handed pickup throw and hitting the stump. First of all, we're going to watch Ian Westwood do a demonstration with a stationary ball. The areas I want you guys, our coaches, to look at, when you're running in at the ball, Westy ran in at this direction and then started running away from the stumps. The stumps are there and he's running at that direction. If at all possible, you've got to make the angle your angle and come in on a tighter line. The other thing is to pick the ball up with all the pressure on your front foot. Now, Westy did it and all the pace was the same pace. So what I would like to see, I'm going to walk through our goals, bang. I'm going to go as quick as I can. As I approach the ball, I'm going to drop again. I'm going to start picturing the stumps, but not looking at the stumps. Then I'm going to get into this power position on my front foot. Open my shoulder slightly, so I've got easy access to the stumps. If we can keep and maintain our power on the left foot, still not looking at the stumps, we've picked up now all the power. We're almost in a, a racing position. Got the ball. This next step is vital. From there, I am going to jump up. Get nice and high. So my arm's up high, not throwing sidearm. Oh, it's out. I think that's out. I think punching is gone here. I'm nice and low. Bang, bang, bang. Hit the stumps. This is the area that you want your youngsters to throw the ball at. They've got to hit the base. There's a much bigger area here. When the ball's bouncing around this area, so much of a better chance to hit the stumps. Sneaking suspicion that Clark might be struggling. Clark is very quick, but the throw was accurate and it was fast. Okay, we've done the, the one-handed pickup from the left-hand side. Now, I think it's, it's important that you don't just go from one side to the other, have one throw, one throw. Try and do a session of five to ten minutes from this side, then you go across to that side, and then you can mix it afterwards. You're just getting a nice rhythm, walk, 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 bang, crow hop through. Fielding, Trevor Penny, the man doing the fielding. Just the norm for him. Very quick over the ground. We just go into throwing technique now. First of all, when with your players, you want them to grip the ball cross seam. Okay, not too much stuck in their hand. It's just got to be nicely balanced with a slight gap in between there. Let's look at some crucial areas which are going to help your guys. As soon as they start their throwing practice, they're going to be buzzing. Okay, so it's quite simple. Get in there, nice swooping back lift, as though you, you want to take your knuckles on the floor. Up there like that, once that's nice and high, this arm is nice and tight and the elbow is pointing at your partner. Nice big stride. Now the stride should be at least two thirds of the length of your body. Good. Oh yes, hubba hubba. That's a beauty. I know I made my club first team as a 14-year-old and I batted 11 and it was a fielder. And that was with uh, Dave Houghton and uh, Graham Hick and all that. So we had a, a fantastic side, but I, I just made it as a fielder, batted at 11. So.